Hello, my friend, and welcome. What you're about to hear are some of the most important words you will ever hear in your life. They explain the relationship between God and man. In the beginning, only God existed. There was nothing else. God made the world and commanded the light to shine. He made the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. God is good, and he rules over everything. The information you are hearing comes from God's book. This book is the word of God and tells us about God and his ways. It contains the writings of many well-known prophets. God loves all people. This book explains why God had to separate himself from the people he loves so much. It also explains how God made a plan to bring the people back to him, to be his friends and his children. This book is called the Bible. God made everything by the words he spoke. He said, let it be. And it was as he said. He spoke and made the sky. He spoke and made the sea. He spoke and the land was made. Then he created all living things in the same way. The fish in the water, the birds in the air, and all the animals. In this way, God spoke everything into being. God was pleased with all that he made. Everything that God made was good. It was all very good. God made the first man from the dust of the earth and the first woman from the rib of the man. He called them Adam and Eve. God loved Adam and Eve. He gave them authority over everything he had made. They were God's friends. God made a beautiful garden for them to live in. God spoke with them there. He gave them permission to eat any fruit in the garden except for the fruit of one tree. But they chose to disobey God and they ate the forbidden fruit. They sinned against God. They broke their friendship with him and he had to punish them. God hates sin. He sent them out of the beautiful garden. Since that time, people have had to work hard to get the food they need to eat. Sin also brought pain, suffering, and death. Adam and Eve had two sons. Their names were Cain and Abel. Cain was jealous of Abel and one day killed him. God punished Cain for doing this wicked thing. God is very grieved when people sin. Sin is what has separated us from God. God and man could no longer have the close friendship that God wanted. Adam and Eve had other children and many generations went by. Now, there were many people, all descendants of Adam and Eve. Each of them disobeyed God. They were becoming more and more wicked. Their sin was so great that God decided to destroy them all in a great flood. There was only one man who loved and obeyed God. His name was Noah. God told Noah to build a large ship called an ark. God was going to save Noah and his family in this ship. It took Noah many years to build the ark. All during that time, Noah warned the people about their bad ways and the punishments God was going to send. The people would not believe Noah's warning. They did not want to turn from their evil ways. God brought animals of every kind to Noah, and Noah took them into the ship. Then Noah and his wife and their three sons, each one with his wife, also went to the ship. They were only eight people in the ark with the animals. Then God closed the door. After seven days, God sent a very heavy rain and brought water from under the ground. In 40 days, God flooded the whole earth. It was too late for everyone outside the ark. They all drowned. But Noah and his family were safe in the ark because they believed and obeyed God. Many years went by and the descendants of Noah became many tribes. Abraham was one of these descendants. He was a man who also loved and obeyed God. God promised Abraham that his descendants would be a great people. 
Abraham and his wife, Sarah, did not have any children at the time, but they still believed in God's promise. When they were old, they had a son whom they called Isaac. God promised to do something very special through Isaac and his descendants. Abraham had children by other women. One of those children was named Ishmael. He became the father of the Arab nations. The descendants of Isaac became a great people, called Israel. One of the descendants of Isaac was Moses. He also believed and obeyed God. God called Moses to a mountain where he spoke with him. God gave him laws to teach the people. Moses came down from the mountain with the laws of God, written on stone. God's laws are for all people. His laws are good. The laws that God gave Moses are for the good of all people. The laws tell us what we are to love, worship, and obey the one true God. We are not to make idols or bow down to them. We should not use God's name in a disrespectful way. All people should set aside one day each week to rest and worship God. Children should obey and honor their parents. We must not murder. We must not commit adultery. We must not steal. We must not make false statements about other people. And we must not desire the things that belong to others. In those days, when a person sinned by breaking God's laws, he had to sacrifice a lamb to God. The lamb died in place of the offender. This would remind the offender that it was wrong to break God's laws and that it was very displeasing to God. The lamb was a symbol of a much greater sacrifice that would be made later, a sacrifice that God himself would make. It would take away the sins of all people. Who would accept God's sacrifice as a sacrifice for their sins? God was planning to send Jesus into the world to become a sacrifice. For the sins of all people. God told this to several of his prophets. And they wrote about this in the Bible. It was said of Jesus. Look. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Jesus was born in a very special way. An angel from heaven was sent to a young virgin named Mary. Mary was engaged to a man named Joseph. The angel told Mary that God was going to cause her to become pregnant without having contact with a man. Mary knew that God had the power to make the heavens and earth by saying the word. She knew that God could do what he said he would do and she believed him. In a very special way, God was the father of Jesus. The angel also appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel explained to Joseph that Mary had not been with another man, but that God was doing something special in her. He instructed Joseph and Mary to name the child Jesus, which means Savior. Joseph obeyed God and did not sleep with Mary until the baby was born. About this time, the king required all people to return to the town of their ancestors so they could keep an account of the people. Mary and Joseph were to travel to the town of Bethlehem. When they arrived there, no one had room for them. All the houses were full of people, so they had to stay where the cattle were kept. It was there that Mary gave birth to the baby Jesus. That night, an angel appeared to some shepherds who were watching their sheep in a field nearby. He told them that a special child, who was to be the savior of the people, was born nearby. Then, suddenly, many angels appeared in the sky, singing and praising God. The shepherds went to see the special child. They told the people all around there how the angels had appeared to them. We are not told very much about the early life of Jesus in the Bible. We are told that Mary and Joseph took the baby Jesus to Egypt. 
when someone was trying to kill the holy baby. Then they returned to Israel, to the town of Nazareth. Jesus grew in wisdom and strength, and the grace of God was upon him. When Jesus was twelve years old, Mary and Joseph took him to Jerusalem. He talked about God with the teachers and leaders of Israel. He listened to them and asked and answered questions. They were all surprised at his great knowledge of God. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he began to teach people about God. Many people believed his teaching, and he became very well known. Jesus had great power from God to do miracles. He was able to heal blind people. He spoke to dead people, and they came back to life. He even walked on top of the sea. He did many great miracles in the presence of many people to prove that he was sent from God and had authority from God. He could speak the word and it would happen as he said. Jesus was very special and many people knew it. Jesus did many wonderful things and many people followed him. Jesus was kind, healed the sick and taught God's way. Jesus was good. Jesus did not sin. Jesus always did what God wanted him to do. He came to show us God's love and to win people back to follow God and walk in God's ways. But there were influential religious leaders who were very jealous of Jesus. They did not want to admit that they had broken God's law. And they were sinners like the rest of the people. Their hearts were hard and they did not want to believe that Jesus was sent from God. They told lies about Jesus and had him arrested. He was beaten. Soldiers placed a crown of thorns on his head and mocked him. Jesus could have resisted this and stopped them. He did not resist. He came to the world to become a sacrifice for sin. His life was going to be sacrificed for the sins of all people. Jesus was taking upon himself the punishment that the people deserved. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a wooden cross. Then they stood the cross upright in the ground, and Jesus hung there until he died. In those days, it was the custom to kill the worst criminals in this cruel way. Two criminals were also put on the cross that day. But Jesus was not a criminal. He was innocent. He had done no wrong. That day, he was dying for other people's sins, not his own. He was dying for the sins of the people who were alive then but also for the sins of the people who would come later. His death takes away the sins of all who want to turn from their sinful ways and accept this sacrifice as their own sacrifice. When Jesus died, he made this perfect sacrifice. He paid for the sins of all people with his sinless blood. God has said that all of the sacrifice is no longer necessary because Jesus made the perfect sacrifice. The enemies of Jesus thought that they had destroyed him, but this is not so. After Jesus died on that cross, a wealthy friend put the body of Jesus into a new burial cave. They closed the entrance of the cave with a large stone on the third day morning early. Some women came to the cave to perform the proper burial customs. They were surprised to find the stone rolled away and Jesus was not there. They were even more surprised to see two angels who told them that Jesus was alive. These messengers from God told them very clearly that Jesus had risen from the dead. After Jesus rose from the dead, he began to visit some of his disciples. He talked with them and ate with them. Thomas, one of his disciples, heard of this and could not believe that Jesus was alive again. He said, Until I see his nail wounds and touch him, I will not believe. Jesus came to this group again, this time when Thomas was there. Jesus spoke directly to Thomas, and Thomas fell down on his knees before him, believing. Jesus said, You believe because you see me. Blessed are those who do not see me and yet believe.
For 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to people. Many people saw him and knew that he was alive. Now it was time for Jesus to go back to heaven. He had finished the work he had come to do. Jesus told his followers that they were to go out and tell everyone everywhere what he had done. Then, as many of his followers watched, Jesus rose off the ground and went higher and higher until he went into a cloud and disappeared from their sight. Just then, two angels appeared. They told the disciples that Jesus would one day return in the same way that he had left. He is now in heaven, preparing a place for all those who believe in him and follow him. Jesus made the way for us to come to God. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Jesus died to save sinners from the punishment of sin. Jesus never sinned. He died to take away the sin that separates us from God. The cross reminds us that Jesus was the spotless Lamb of God. He was sacrificed for us. When we believe in Jesus and repent, God forgives our sins. Jesus makes us God's children and his friends. When Jesus was alive, he told many stories to help the people understand God's ways. He taught that there were two roads. Everyone starts out on the wide road of sin that leads to destruction and punishment. We all have a sinful nature that we inherited from Adam, the first man. We have sinned by doing the things that are displeasing to God. Jesus said that we would leave the wide road and enter the narrow road that leads to God in heaven. We can only enter the narrow road through Jesus. We enter it by repenting of our sins and accepting that the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross was for our sins. Why not speak to him now from your heart? Say to him, God, you are great and holy, but I confess to you that I have sinned. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sin. Please forgive me. Clean my heart. Make me one of your children. I want to follow the way of Jesus and come to live with you when I die. Thank you, Father. Amen. Jesus welcomes people from all tribes, all nations, and languages. When they believe in Jesus, they all become the children of God. Though they are from many nations and cultures, they all belong to one family, the family of God, all united together because of the Lord Jesus. They are on the narrow way that leads to heaven. One night, a teacher of religion named Nicodemus came to talk to Jesus. Jesus told him something very unusual. Jesus said that everyone who wants to belong to God's family needs to be born a second time. When we enter into the family of our parents, we are born into it. When we enter into God's family, it is like being born a second time. The first is a physical birth, the second is a spiritual birth. We have no power to change ourselves. The Holy Spirit of God gives us a new life when we believe and follow Jesus. We become new people, the people of God. Before Jesus went back to heaven, he promised his disciples that he would send the gift of God's Holy Spirit. Ten days after Jesus returned to heaven, there was a Jewish holiday. Jewish people living in many other nations came to Jerusalem to celebrate this. The disciples of Jesus were also there, all together in one place. Suddenly, God's Holy Spirit came and filled all the disciples as Jesus had promised. These Jewish people from all the other nations were surprised when the disciples began speaking in all their languages about the wonderful things that God had done. God's Spirit is powerful. Now the Holy Spirit lives in all true Christians and gives them the power to love and obey Jesus. Before a person believes in Jesus, 
He is like a man walking in the dark. He stumbles and often falls into sin because he has no light to guide him. When we trust in the Lord Jesus, we become like a man walking on a straight road on a sunny day. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If a man follows me, he will not walk in darkness. God gives his Holy Spirit to help and teach all believers his way of life. A Christian is a new person who wants to obey the word of God. He is thankful that God has forgiven his sin. A believer in Jesus Christ must not commit adultery, fight, steal, or worship idols or other gods. The Holy Spirit gives the believer power to turn away from all evil things and to do good things. When a family is walking in God's way, the man loves his wife and the woman honors her husband. This is what the Word of God commands. They help and encourage each other and teach their children to love God and obey His Word. The Christian family prays and works together for the Lord. Jesus taught His followers to love all people, even their enemies. We should help anyone in need, even people of other nations or religions. Jesus told the story about a man who was traveling to another town. Robbers attacked him and beat him up. A man from another religion found the badly injured traveler and helped the man because he was in need. He did not ask payment. Jesus said, we also are to do good things like this. Some people are in contact with Satan or evil spirits or believe in idols and fetishes before they become followers of Jesus. Followers of Jesus are not to be friends with bad spirits. We do not have to fear them or serve them. The Lord is more powerful than Satan, evil spirits, idols, or fetishes. Christian believers get rid of everything that belongs to Satan and evil spirits. We Believers do not need to fear Satan. We must ask only God to help and protect us. Once there was a man filled with evil spirits. Ropes and chains could not hold him because the demon inside were very strong. Jesus commanded the demons to come out of the man and they did. This man was freed from the power the spirits had over him and went to tell his friends what Jesus had done. Jesus has much more power than the evil spirits. He has delivered many people from their control. Satan and evil spirits must all obey Jesus. Satan often tries to tempt God's children to stop following the Lord Jesus. Satan wants us to forget God and God's ways and wants to tempt us with things like money, clothes, tobacco, immorality, and strong drink. Satan wants us to believe that these things are more important than God. He wants us to believe that these things will make us happy. But Satan is a liar. He tries to deceive us and turn us against God. The Holy Spirit will help us to resist the temptation when we trust the Lord Jesus and follow him. Jesus told this story. A young man left home, went far away, and did many evil things. He committed adultery, wasted all the money his father had given him, and sinned greatly. After his money was finished, a severe famine came, and he became very poor and hungry. He was sorry for his sin and returned to his father to ask forgiveness. His father loved him greatly and he received the young man back again. This story tells us that if we sin, we can be truly sorry and turn from our sin. Because God loves us so much and because the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, God can forgive our sin 
and receive us back again. What should God's people do if they become sick? They can pray to God in the name of Jesus and believe that he will do whatever is best. They must not pray to anything else or look to charms or fetishes. God is able to heal a sick man if he wills or help him find the correct medicine. God loves us and controls all that happens to his children. God protects the believer from Satan. So we must not be afraid. Jesus is with us to give peace in times of trouble. We all know that one day we will die. But what happens to us then? The Bible, the Word of God says that when a Christian dies, his spirit goes to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. His friends should not be overcome with grief. We must not fear death because we know that God loved us and has saved us from sin by our faith in Christ, the one who is to sacrifice for our sins. Unbelievers do not have this wonderful future of eternal life with God after death. They go to the place of punishment because they refuse God's way. Each part of our body has its own task. The eye is for seeing, the air for hearing, the mouth for talking and eating. All the parts of the body work together. If one part is sick or injured, the whole body feels it. God says that believers are parts of the body. The Lord Jesus is the head of that body. God has work for every Christian to do. For example, preaching, singing, teaching, farming or cooking. Each must work for the Lord Jesus to help the whole body be strong. All believers must love each other and work together or the body will not be strong. All believers should try to meet together regularly with other believers to worship God. We learn from the Bible, sing hymns and pray. We should also bring gifts for the work of God. God also commands us to remember the death of the Lord Jesus. His people share bread and drink. The bread reminds us of the body of Jesus which was broken for us on the cross. The cup reminds us of his blood which was shed to cleanse us from sin. We remember his death in this way until he comes back again. One day, the Lord Jesus will suddenly come back to earth again from heaven, just as he promised. He will come to get all God's family. Jesus will raise up all God's people who have died. Their graves will be empty. God's people who are still alive will go with them. We will all meet the Lord Jesus in the air and stay with him forever. The unbelievers will be left behind to face the judgment of God. We do not know when Jesus will return, but we should be ready and waiting for him. As the fruit tree produces fruit, the Spirit of God produces good fruit in the life of a believer. Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. If you stay in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. God's Holy Spirit lives and works inside of our hearts. The fruit he produces in us is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control in our lives. If the branches of the tree do not bear fruit, they are cut down, they die, and are burned. The followers of Jesus are to produce much fruit. This glorifies and honors God, our Heavenly Father. Jesus told his followers that they should go and tell others the wonderful news, that they can be saved from sin and eternal punishment. 
Many people are confused by what they think Christians believe. To them, it is a great mystery. They may think, why are these people so different? Why do they act the way they do? What are their motives? If you are a Christian believer, you should also help others to understand that this good news is for everybody. God's Holy Spirit will help us to have wisdom and courage as we follow Jesus. My friend, I trust that this program was interesting to you and will help you to understand better what true Christians believe and the way they should act. You may want to go back and listen to this many times. Stop at any place and think about these very important words. Ask yourself, do I follow God's way as I should? Have I allowed the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross to become the sacrifice for my sins? Talk to God from your heart. He loves all people. He loves you. Music